you know, part of like a day to day thing is just scrolling through the group and, you know, trying to just make connections. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Reagan, and you've discovered Unicorns Unite. This is a podcast for freelancers, service providers, virtual assistants, and curious listeners who would like to experience the freedom and flexibility of working virtually. We're the magic makers, movers and shakers, and the real people doing the work behind the scenes of online businesses. Welcome to Unicorns Unite. Hey, you're in for a treat. One of my very own unicorn students, Megan Ramis, was talking to me on a Facebook Live about how she got hired to a six-figure entrepreneur's team as her Facebook community manager. Talk about a score. It makes me so happy that she's working with her golden ring client right out of the gate when taking the VA crash course. It is a fairy tale story. So this is a Facebook Live we recorded a little while ago, not too long ago, and I want you to know that yes, this is a real job. She works 20 hours a week and makes consistent income being a Facebook community manager. And with that said, this episode is sponsored by my very own Facebook community manager course. It's a mini course where you can learn everything business owners expect you to know and will be wowed if you know to be a Facebook community manager. You'll learn that it's more than just monitoring comments. There's a whole business sales strategy when it comes to Facebook groups. So go check that out. Link in the notes. You can also go to emilyreaganpr.com to find all my courses. This one is open and you're welcome to take it just like Megan did. She's so brave and she's going to share her story today. I mean, you know how it is when you're a behind the scenes person and you don't really want to do a Facebook live, but Megan did awesome. And I know Megan's story is going to motivate you to go for this type of work. Business owners out there are looking for very smart, resourceful community managers all of the time. They just don't always know what to call the gig. And you didn't know that this was what it was called either. So pay attention and learn a lot. Hey everyone, welcome to Thursday's Lunch and Learn. Today I have Megan Ramis here to talk about her role being a Facebook community manager. So I want to jump straight in and I'd love to know a little bit about you, Megan. Tell everyone where you live and a little bit about your family. Okay, so I live in Erdenheim. It's a suburb right outside of Philadelphia. I have two boys. I have a nine-year-old and a six-year-old. And I mean, I guess I'll kind of jump into how I found you, Emily. Does that work? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So I was an elementary school teacher um, for a really long time. So I um, I actually had a medical diagnosis. I was diagnosed with stage four melanoma. Um, So I had to, you know, stop teaching, obviously. And I went through treatment for a long time. And it just kind of left me in a place where, I don't know, I got, I got home and I got used to being with my kids. And there's some side effects that just make it really difficult. If, if you are a teacher out there, you know, you're on your feet all the time. And um, I just was looking for kind of other options. And I started tutoring online. So I actually still do that. Um, but I just wanted something different, something beyond teaching. And I think I was like, Pinteresting, you know, work at home jobs or something. And I, I started following you. And um, I just thought, you know what, I want to see, like, I just want to see if I can do something else or, or what else to do. And that's kind of how I ended up in the crash course. And I'm so glad that I did. Oh my God. So tell everyone, how long have you been out of work since your diagnosis and your, your time away from being a school teacher? How long had it been? So years. I mean, I was diagnosed maybe five years ago, but I, I tried to go back. Like I went back, you know, I did one treatment and then I tried to go back and it was too much. And so I took a little bit more time off. So I've been feeling good and like wanting to work for, I would say maybe like over a year, probably closer to two years. I've been doing the online tutoring, but I just don't have the stamina to, to be back in the classroom all the time. Oh my gosh. I don't blame you. Yeah. But tell me about the online tutoring. Is that like a, a, like a freelance business? Or are you working under the umbrella of another business? Yeah. So I'm an independent contractor, but the company that I work for, I guess, is VIP Kids. It's a pretty pretty well known um, ESL company. So I teach okay. English to kids in China. Oh, cool! And their time difference is they're twelve hours different than us. So I teach 
for them, it's like after school. But for me, it's why my kids are still asleep. So is that for you? So I get up at like five in the morning. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. How many hours do you do? So I do, I just do it on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can make your own schedule. You know, I can take off whenever I want to, but I teach, I'll teach from like five 30 in the morning until seven 30 when my kids get up. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What a cool fit. It's so, I love hearing these like random little jobs people fall into. Yeah. You can use their skill set and make it work. So and it's nice. And, you know, some people do like really try to go in full time and you can make all sorts of money referring people. That's just not my thing. Okay. Yeah. I can sell it to my friend. You know, I, it's just not my comfort zone. So that's why I was just looking for something else besides like just doing yeah. that. So how did you find me? Just curious. Like, yeah, so I think I was Pinterest. Like, I think I Pinterested like you know ideas for working from home, and I think I ended up on. I must have ended up on something. I don't remember exactly. So funny because I have not done a lot of Pinterest for myself, and now that we've gone through the and you know that's how I started, right? So yeah. um, I actually just gave a Pinterest presentation. I've given like three in the last seven days, and I'm like, okay, now that my rebranding is done. I'll start to get on there because, you know, I, I just was waiting for some inspiration, but Pinterest is such a fun way to find like free articles and, and help. So you found me there and then tell everyone when you took the crash course. So I think it was February, right? The beginning of yeah. the beginning of February. And then, you know, when I joined your group, um, the Facebook group, there were different job ops posted and you know, I think I was only into like maybe week two or three of the course when I saw the job posting for this, you know, my golden ring client that, <laughs> that I'm with now. And so it was apprehensive. I'm like, am I really ready for this? Should I do this? And the application was a lot. Like it was very time consuming. And so I was like, okay, I can either do like my crash course homework <laughs> or I could, you know, put that aside just for a minute and focus on doing this. And so I decided, I'm so glad I I did decide to just go for it. I'm so glad too. So just to bring um, people in the loop, she works for Tamara, who is a, she runs Southern Adornments. Do you want to tell everyone about her business? Yeah. So um, Southern Adornments is the name of the business and she creates door hangers you know, instead of a wreath on your front door, you can make these door hangers, which I didn't know was a whole <laughs> business. But Tamara's awesome. I mean, she, I think she started just doing them on her own, but now she runs this huge business where she teaches people how to make these door hangers and they can buy templates and she teaches them painting techniques. And that's sort of where I come in. She has her own community of, I mean, she has her own membership mm-hmm. where people sign up to you know, belong, I guess, to her club where she continues to teach them. Yes. Access to her. So I actually included her job description inside my Facebook community manager course, just so people could see. But I mean, they put that sucker everywhere. That wasn't like a, hey, Emily, only post it to your girls. So it was a very competitive position. Can you tell everyone about the job description and what you had to do? And how right. that, I mean, it was a, a serious document. Um, there were lots of different situational things that they posted uh, or, you know, that they asked about. So, you know, if you saw somebody say this within the community, how would you handle it? And then there were other things where um, they wanted me to just brainstorm and think like, what kind of a post would you write to engage these women or... The one that I really spent a lot of time on was somebody was, you know, there was an argument between group members, like, you know, you took my idea. And and so I had to write my response, like, how would I handle that? And so I think my background as a teacher was really helpful, honestly, yeah. for that. Yeah. <laughs> as a mediator, right? Yeah. Right. And think- moms too, right? We're always doing that. <laughs> Gosh, and it's such like a common sense thing. And it's got to come from somebody who's like sincere and empathetic and can just, I don't know, be a people person and understand where people are coming from. It's not the right job for everybody. I'll tell you that. So that is really neat that sh- they made you practice like any job, even if you're applying for a restaurant, you have to do the personality test to make sure you're going to be an okay bus boy. I mean, it's it's out there. Exactly. And honestly, if it hadn't been something like that, I'm sure I wouldn't have got, you know, I, I don't think I'd have, they wouldn't have looked twice at my resume. I mean, I didn't have tons of experience, you know, yeah. 
I was like, oh, I'm in my neighborhood Facebook group, or you know, I ran the third grade website for my, <laughs> or the third grade Facebook group for my son. But that was pretty much the extent of my group management experience when I applied. But that should give everybody here in this group so much hope because we have all been a part of the group. We've seen the group. Some of us have volunteered and done that position, and you can go from that to a paid position. Yeah knowing the right things to say, having some connections, finding those job opportunities, but you don't have to have tons of experience. So did they say experience was required in the job? Do you remember? Um, I know there were, I just looked at it before I came on with you. I looked back at at, at my um, resume, but it just said list, list the experience that you've had. And so I did, I wrote, you know, I ran the third grade. Good. this Phillips's web, you know, classroom web page or whatever um, that my kids were on. And another part I really stressed that I did have was the communication. And as a teacher, you know, I said I had to communicate with families and build those relationships and, you know, build relationships with my classroom and with other teachers on the staff. So I was able to kind of bring that to it, but it wasn't specific to Facebook community management. Yes. And the skills that everybody has done in our past life, in our former life, in our former jobs, it can translate to the online space. You just need to think outside of the box and get creative like that. Like even if I, if you hadn't been a teacher, I guarantee you could have phrased, you know, um, some kind of uh, your family dynamic. You could bring that to the table, of course, or like past any kind of past work experience and dealing with people and interpersonal skills. So yeah, that's awesome. And way to play up the teacher thing. Everyone in this group who's a teacher, you have strong assets. Like you are so hireable and people want you, you have a good work ethic and you have that communication skill. So highlight your strengths. So how long did it take to get hired? Like walk us through the process of what happened. So it was on February 21st that I first applied. And then I did have a callback. Um, I had to submit a short video. And then they scheduled an interview Um, and it wasn't with Tamara. Like I didn't meet Tamara until after I was hired. Yeah. Um, So I was hired on March 3rd and then I think I signed my contract March 30th. But my situation I think was also kind of unique because Tamara hired someone to like somebody, um, this woman, Diana, who specializes in helping small business owners with community management. Like that's her her niche. And so she kind of put me through a a crash course in her own right. That's awesome. Do you know if she's, you know, where does she find her hiring pool? I don't know. I mean, she's the one who created that interview for Tamara, but, but she's, you know, I I just went through your course as well, which was awesome. And yeah, it was, it was different than what I learned from her. Like from her, I learned a lot of, um, like bigger picture, like onboarding and, and like, I think she's, she's more for the small business owner who's looking to hire a community manager and not as much like community manager day to day kind of things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I found your tutorial, like, like just specific, like how to do things on Facebook. (laughs) I found that to be super helpful. Oh my gosh, this is good. I did not pay her to say this, anybody. I was going to talk about it at the end, but I just released a Facebook community management workshop. It's like a course just to teach everybody the ins and outs of being a Facebook community manager for a small business owner. Because it's more than just accepting, you know, and approving new members and making posts and, you know, muting people and kicking them out. You know, there's a lot that goes into it. And it's scary when you have control over some of the settings and your clients are coming to you, wanting you to come up with engagement ideas like you had to do in your own uh, interview process. So this course is like a two hour crash course. So I am so glad you found it helpful. I actually meant to ask you that on the side before we started this. (laughs) How did mine rate compared to hers? But hers is onboarding people to get ready for the team, like more of the team systems and processes, right? Right, right. And just like kind of the bigger framework, like from the business owner, I think is point of mind. Like how can a community help you and what's, how can it help your business grow kind of a thing. Okay. Um, But like I watched your crash course and I was like, okay, I have to go, like, let me check the entrance questions that they get asked when they come into the community, things like that. I was like, cool. All right. (laughs) I have to say, I just um, signed on with a new client and 
I was talking to them and I just went through a couple quick little things they should do with their Facebook group just to kind of give them a win and trust me and not charge them. And they immediately implemented it and they're like on it and it showed me as a VA or, you know, consultant or whatever I, you call me right now that they are willing to act on it. And they learned from me that I know what I'm talking about. I'm here to help them. So it was, the, it was like a nice little thing, but you don't know that unless you've done it or, you know, you see the big picture of business. So that course has tons of that little stuff. So, okay. So tell me why. Um, okay. I have a couple of questions. Let's go back to the video you sent in. Cause I do say this is a good thing. Now, first of all, if the job description tells you all to do certain things, you have to do it. You have to follow the directions. They are immediately throwing out applications of people who don't follow the rules. It's a test. If they say don't DM, don't DM. You'll disqualify yourself. If they say send in a video and you don't, you're not getting hired. So can you tell everyone about your video and how you did it and like how <laughs> you feel? Yeah, I'm going to be totally honest. So <laughs> it took me hours. Like fortunately this was pre COVID stuff and my kids were at school <laughs> and yeah. even like it probably took me four or five hours probably total to do this application. Like I really did invest a lot of time in, Good. To, you know, professionally answering, I guess the questions and I tried to be creative and I love writing. And so, you know, I really yeah. just, I really took my time with it. And then the video was like the last thing. It was like, I could just send it once I got the video done. So they suggested that I use Loom. So I had never done that before, but I, it was easy to figure out. Um, it's, free. it's free. Everybody use yeah. Loom. And I did like a practice one. And I was still like in my, the clothes that I wear for my tutoring that I do in the morning. And like my background was goofy. It was like my, I still have it. It's like, I have like a map for those are all the props I use when I tutor. And I watched it back and I was like, you know what? This is me. Like I had planned on editing that or, you know, I, I had planned on sort of critiquing myself and then refilming it and looking more professional. And I didn't. <laughs> and oh. so I just sent the video and I explained to, I did write a little disclaimer next to it. I said, you know, this was my first take. I just wanted you really to get a sense of me. Like this is, this is Own it. Awesome. come and get it kind of a thing. So fortunately okay. I didn't scare them off, I guess. I don't know if I would recommend that. <laughs> but you had on nice clothes because you had been tutoring at least. Yeah. Like, yeah. Off off. <laughs> yeah. So, good. Your husband wasn't sleeping in the background on a recliner, right? No, no. I was definitely still in an office, you know, <laughs> situation, but it just, it wasn't super polished. I didn't go back and edit it. You know, I, I probably said too many likes or, you knows, but yeah, it was probably good. You don't come across too professional because those professional, super perfect people don't have my trust. <laughs> they yeah. don't, they don't. That's kind of um, how I felt too. I was like, you know, that, and they didn't want me to talk about anything specific. They said, just send a video why you think you would be a good fit for this job. So, you know, it was a two minute video and I just kind of <laughs> said, here I am. This is it. I'm good at, and I, again, I used my experience that I had, like, I like to communicate. I love to write. I'm on Facebook a lot anyway. <laughs> I know that one tactic in an interview process is to tell a story, like highlight, you know, something you've achieved or gotten through a sticky situation or something that's good. Did you tell a story or were you just kind of like general, like this is? No, they did. When I had, the, <laughs> after that written application, when I had my first interview, or there was only one, when I had the interview, they did ask me some of those situational things, like how have you helped or, or what was a, a time when you had a problem at work? And I did. I, it was hard. I didn't have anything prepared like that, but <laughs> you know, I talked about having like, I moved from being a classroom teacher to the art teacher for a little while. And some of the people in the art department, you know, didn't like that they weren't consulted on my move. Like they were kind of like, oh, why is she moving from this? She's not an artist. And so I just talked about how I handled, you know, dealing with a coworker that was an issue. Well, can you tell me now? I'm curious. I want to know how did you handle that? <sighs> I just had to not let it bother me. It was somebody who I rarely saw. It wasn't somebody that I saw on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. It was somebody who worked at the high school who was like the head of the art department. And I just said, you know, I'm not a professional artist, but I'm a really good teacher. And yeah, I I'm not pretending. Exactly. Okay. Interesting. The people drama, because you're always going to get that. So if you can paint it 
in a good light where you came off, you know, rational and fair and not dramatic. That's always, that's always good. And we all run across that, you know, point is you don't, I think in those type of answers, I'm just thinking out loud right now. You don't always make it someone else's fault. Like you come to the table with solutions. Like that's, that's what the interviewer wants to see. You know, how do you problem solve and think on your feet and treat people nice, especially if you're going to be the community manager. Right. So, oh gosh, so tell me what your job looks like now. How many hours a week do you work and how many groups do you manage and what is your life like now? Yeah. So Tamara has a free group, Door Hanger Painter Tips, I think it's called, which Mm -hmm. I'm not involved with. Like she hired me specifically for this other group called the Painters Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. where um, the people have signed up for this, you know, it's a monthly membership that they pay for. And so I'm just in there. They're, I don't have to worry about engagement. I think that's something that a lot of communities really, you know, that's big. And these people want to be here and they want to share what they've been working on. So engagement hasn't been, you know, I think I'm lucky in that respect. Yeah, And I think the DIY world, is a little bit easier for that sake because people are so excited and they like to share and critique and <laughs> have opinions and, and, you know, cheer each other on. So that I do like that the industry that you're in, mm-hmm. but that's cool. That's a really good point. The free groups, you have to bring this whole other aspect to it of how do I keep this group active? Right. Right. So, um, you know, the activity is there and then a lot of it is just helping them navigate things. I kind of, um, I organized like before there weren't units. And so Mm -hmm. um, I needed a learning group and created these units where like there's a how to unit. There's some of the, some of the members aren't um, super tech savvy. So I've been doing a lot of like, here's how you log on to this, or, you know, here's how you can use this. We organize zoom parties for them where they can like get together and mingle and meet other people in the group in these Zoom parties. Oh, that's such a fun idea. Yeah, it's great. They have a lot of fun. I've been to a few of them. Sometimes Tamara hosts them or, you know, she'll have somebody else jump in. Even some of the members host them sometimes. But I um, I do a lot of, like, how for people that have never done Zoom. I feel like now that we're in this corona world, I feel like everybody knows how to do Zoom now. But <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, yes. Even uh, teachers, all of our teachers are learning and it was a struggle at the beginning, but they're getting the hang of it. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of my posts are informative. Like she'll have a certain tutorial scheduled. A guest artist will come in to teach something. And so it's all done in her Kajabi membership site, a lot of it. But I, I'm just kind of like the reminder person. So I spend a lot of time in Canva, you know, creating little graphics to go with the posts. Like, hey, you know, two o'clock today, make sure you're here. Or, things like that. Hey, this podcast is sponsored by my very own GIF and sticker making workshop. Turn your clients' videos into GIFs, design branded stickers for Instagram stories, and master the art of making your own GIF for promo emails. This is fun unicorn magic that we can do behind the scenes easily for our clients. The workshop is one hour, just $17.99. The link is in the show notes or go to emilyreaganpr.com slash GIF workshop. That's G-I-F workshop. Back to the show. So a lot of keeping a membership happy and, you know, your retention rates high are having a community manager like Megan, who is just there to answer questions quickly and facilitate things and help people out in their stuck. Otherwise, people can get really overwhelmed really quickly. And that's the number one reason why people quit membership sites is they get uh, overwhelmed and there's too much content. So having you in there organizing it kind of spoon feeding some of the events and is really helpful because, you know, all of these women, you know, some of them probably have, you know, businesses and, you know, a full-time job. Some of them, it might be a hobby, but every single person there is busy. So you really have to come with this empathetic, nice place of serving because you are probably getting the same question over and over. <laughs> have you um, templatized any of it or do you have, um, like uh, your can responses, like ready to go on a document so you can copy and paste it. I do. I do. I'm, I'm kind of building that. That's a, a work in progress. But yeah. um, the one thing I have to, everybody's really nice. Like I haven't had any issues, you know, there had like the tone of any of, of uh, so far, I should knock on wood, I guess, but it's all been really friendly and helpful. Um, 
One issue I do have is like the customer service kind of questions. Oh yeah. So, you know, we want to keep that away. We want this to be like a fun community where, where they come for inspiration and ideas, not like I can't log in or what's, you know, I didn't get this when I thought I was supposed to, or those types of things. Okay. So I have been really trying to make it a point to, I, you know, I have my canned response, you know, please contact customer support at, you know, <laughs> for those sort of things. And that's the one thing I really had to stay on top of and sort of be tough with. Yeah. And you have to kind of tr- train them and teach them and steer the group to be the type of community you want. So do you guys approve posts or is it uh, a free for all in there? Free for all. Okay. That's always a big question people have. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll mention too. So after I got this awesome job, oh, and I don't know if I said, but it's 20 hours a week okay. um, for Tamara. So, oh, you know, that's a lot. That was my first, <laughs> my first job. Yeah. But then after that, um, you had also reached out <laughs> looking for somebody who knew art history. So oh. I connected with another person. What was her uh, name? What is it? Is it Lotus? Yeah. 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 So I connected with Lotus and I was like, you know, I just, I'm going through this community training and, you know, I had the right background. So I'm also, um, you know, working for her a few hours a week as well. Oh my God. With her, with her free group. And then she has a paid group as well. So. Oh my gosh. I, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. I meant to follow up with you and figure out what kind of job you ended up getting. I know that she was, when I was first talking to her, she's like, I don't know if you're going to find my unicorn. I need somebody who's in education and art and knows digital media. And I'm like, oh, you just wait. We post inside our student groups. And we had a handful. We actually we actually had to cut it off. And she hired she ended up hiring two yeah. of our students. And you are one of them who has this unique magical background who can help her out. Yeah. So that, that is awesome. So how many that's a much different dynamic, I guess, than the DIY kind of a group. But it's still, I mean, it's been neat, you know, and it's been neat to have be in that open site too, as well as the the paid smaller group. Yeah. So do how many hours a week is that for you now? So it's like two to three for Lotus at this point. Okay. So you're just under, just under 25 hours a week. How does that feel? Is that you want more? That- Honest answer? Yeah. Um if my kids were going to school, like if life was normal life, then I would be like, yeah, like still actively looking for a lot more. Yeah. But the way things are right now, I'm kind of, I'm kind of good. Like good. I, I still would like to try some other things as well. You know, I don't know if I only want to be a, a community. I love what I'm doing, but you know, I'm interested in trying other things too. So I've kind of been on the lookout for, for smaller. <laughs> Okay. So tell me, so I can keep my eyes open for you. What do you want to do? And I'm thinking like maybe project-based, maybe ongoing if it's the right fit. Tell me what you want to do. Yeah. I don't know. I, I like the design part of it. I really do. I like the the graphic part, the design part. I'm interested with doing something with Pinterest maybe too. And I like writing. So like getting into helping people with the, with their blogs and stuff like that. I don't know. I just, I guess I just don't really know exactly what's out there. So. Yeah. I just posted a job this morning too with a wedding blogger. Did you see that? She needed help with a blogger and a Pinterest. Oh no, I didn't see that. that would be like up your alley. And like the creative fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about Shanti, who was on our show like a couple weeks ago, and she's having to write articles about like foot fungus. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> no, the wedding business sounds fun. And you would have a ton of pictures to work with, which, you know, would make your life easier. Yeah, but um, yeah, go check out that job. Right. <laughs> but I'll let you know as, as things come in, I'll think about it. Yeah. You don't want to overbook yourself right now. Just with this time, I don't know about you, but it just, Marilyn just announced that we're done for the academic year. I think we're like one of the last states to do it. Oh. But we, you know, the kids aren't going back to school. Okay. And no, we, ours are not. Yeah. And our school goes through late June. I think a lot of East Coast does. So just kind of having that hit me, I'm like, okay, don't take on mm. too much because I learned my lesson last summer. It's hard enough for me to show up here for a live, honestly, with kids home. Well, that's what I'm thinking too. I mean, so in Philadelphia, they're talking about not having summer camps and not having like public pools open. And so oh, what are you do? that's when I would do work. Like That's when I would have chunks of time to myself to do this work. So yeah. I don't know. we'll see. We'll do I, I was already trying to figure out the right combination of summer camps that got everybody out of the house. I don't think it's going to happen, but... <laughs> 
Well, just uh, me playing in the sprinkler a lot in our <laughs> swamp of a backyard. <laughs> right. So, gosh, so how do you feel? Like, so did you finish the whole crash course? I, I meant- did. Yeah, it took me a while to go back. Yeah. You know, I kind of was into this new training to to get ready for Painters Clubhouse. Oh, and I was hired like two days before the launch. <laughs> so the Painters Clubhouse already existed, but I guess they have two times a year where they accept new members. So I started like right before the launch. So it was just a little bit chaotic. So I, that was my world for about two weeks. Um, but then once once I kind of got the hang of what I was doing and I understood how the business worked, you know, then I went back and <laughs> and finished. That is really cool. You got to be part of a launch right away. Did you learn a lot by watching? Oh, yeah, definitely. It get- was just tricky because in the membership site, the new members would have questions. I didn't really know the answers. You know, it would be like, fortunately, the team at Southern Adornments was super helpful and friendly. And, and you know, I would just shoot a message to somebody like, uh, what are they talking about? What, what is this? Oh, good, good. That's always nice when there's somebody you can ask. It's so hard onboarding in general let alone during a launch. And then during a launch, everybody has questions anyway. And I, I've had to fill that role like on the chat desk and just helping out during launches. And thank God we got more organized and we had that you know spreadsheet and document to research and copy and paste FAQs. But I don't always know the, the like randomest, littlest answer that somebody wants to know. Mm-hmm. You don't I'm want to much better at that now. Like I already feel better for, you know, their next launch in August. I'm like, oh, I got that now. <laughs> it was just good. Oh my gosh. I'm so proud of you for just jumping in, even though you're just started the crash course. Yeah, I'm glad I did too. I mean, I am. I'm glad I made that choice. Like I definitely thought about it. I'm like, do I, do I really want to, like, is this, what's a better use of my time? I knew I only had a few hours a week to give. And so I'm glad I went for it. What would you say to somebody who's starting now? We have a lot of people who are thinking about getting online and not really sure if this is a legit business, if there's opportunities out there. Like, what would you say to somebody who's thinking about working virtually? Yeah, I mean, I would just say that there are opportunities. I mean, I think so many things now are moving online that it seems like, you know, if anything, I think online is even busier (laughs) the past few months than. You know, there's more people needing help that are moving their their business this way. Do you find people coming to you asking you for, what am I trying to say, references to hire? Does that make sense? Do you find business owners, now that you have such a visible role, do people say, hey, will you help me find a mega? I haven't experienced that yet. Okay. No. Um, you, might, you might as you get more involved and people are like, ooh, I know Megan. Let's, let's ask yeah. her who we should hire. And I mean, to be honest, you know, I, I jumped right into this role before I like finished going through the crash course. So when we were setting up this interview, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, I better set up, you know, finish setting up my Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I really haven't been promoting, you know, I, I haven't been out there looking that hard just because I've, I've yeah. been busy trying to get good at what I'm doing. <laughs> yes. That makes sense. Don't forget that aspect. I did the same thing for years and years. I didn't build my own presence and just do it. It doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to leave your job, but have it out there and build that safety net. And, you know, who knows where this could take you as you learn things and your, your own skill set of being a teacher and the experience you're learning in memberships, like me, you know, who knows? But I'm one, glad you got that going. I was going to say, one tip I would give, too, um, is, and I feel like I've been sucked into it lately, um, but in a good way. Like, I've been intentionally just joining a lot, of, a lot of different communities and seeing what their onboarding is like and seeing what kind of questions they ask and seeing how it's organized. And, you know, I'm kind of overwhelmed. Like, my email inbox is crazy with, <laughs> with all these things. But... It's helpful too. I mean, it it really, I was writing the community guidelines for Mm -hmm. um, the Painters Clubhouse site. And so, you know, I look, I just went to like people that you mentioned or people that I know are like the Amy Porterfield site or, you know, I would just go to those sites and try to see like, okay, well, what did they do? Because obviously, you know, that's a a good thing. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just need to collect your research and, you know, make it fit for your clients. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell, I have another um, advice from Megan um, question. So we have a lot of people in the crash course who I think 
are struggling to finish or struggling to put themselves out there. They have a lot of fear. And I think a lot of people, it stems from, you know, lack of confidence or, you know, just scared to do it. Like, what would you say to one of your fellow students right now to encourage them? Yeah. I mean, I would say it's worth a shot. You know, that's how I felt, you know, when I applied for this, you know, I I didn't have all the experience. I didn't have all the qualifications, but I thought I'm just going to, you know, try to knock them out with, with what I can do, you know, not what I have done, if that makes sense. Yeah. I know. I mean, I was nervous. I was apprehensive. Um, I love going to school. I mean, I love learning new things and I love, I knew that like the things that you were teaching us within the crash course, I'm like, I know I can do that. Like I can figure it out. Like I'm confident in myself in that way. Yeah. But I was worried about getting an actual client. Like I am uncomfortable approaching people, you know, I'm uncomfortable. I'm just kind of awkward. <laughs> and I just, I, I couldn't picture myself taking what I learned and what I know and actually like trying to sell myself to somebody else. Yeah. And I didn't really have to, you know, it was like, I already knew that this opportunity, they were looking for someone. So I was more comfortable with that than sort of like approaching somebody like, hey, do you need this? You know, so that's yeah. what worked for me. That's usually how it's been for me too. I've had people just kind of come to me. I haven't had to be salesy. Well, if you feel comfortable, Deborah was asking how much you charge. Do you feel comfortable sharing that or do you want to give like a, a ballpark range? Yeah, I mean, so it was advertised for 20 hours a week, $20 an hour. So that's for Tamara for the... That's awesome. The but I mean, to me, that's awesome. You know, it's my first my first gig and knowing that it's 20 hours a week and $20 an hour is, I mean, seems good to me. <laughs> oh, I think that's amazing. I mean, you know my story. I started charging $10 an hour. Yeah. <laughs> And I was doing like four a month at the beginning. So I was thrilled to have, you know, 60 bucks in my bank account. Well, if you do yeah. that, it I was mean, in my head to try, if I do try something else, I mean, I feel like I'm pretty, I feel like $20 would be now my minimum that I, that I would do for, for Facebook or for community management in particular, Yeah, um, but just starting something new. I mean, I, I always say like $15 now, you know, 15 to 18, I would even um, start from. If, if they're hiring me without the experience. Yeah. And I would only offer that to maybe your first client. But once you get that first client, you start, you start upping your rates and start charging more because you will book out because you have the skills that people need. Yeah. So did the crash course give you any kind of confidence or did it help you in getting the job at all? Like how did the crash course impact you? Oh, I guess I just, I never would have even known about the job. <laughs> um but also, like, I had never used Canva before the crash course. I didn't know Kajabi. You know, that that was, like, a nonsense word to me. I didn't know. <laughs> I, I just didn't know any of, like, I guess, vocabulary yeah. for this word, if that, for this world, you know, for this virtual assistant world. I can remember starting when I was working with Jennifer Allwood several years ago at the beginning, and she would just throw out names and programs. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, write that down. Like, I don't, I like, it was all new to me. Mm -hmm. And I, that feeling of when you're behind the curve a little and you got to learn real quick and you got to know who's who and what's what doesn't mean you have to be proficient, Yeah, know everything, but it's always that awkward moment when you're like, no, I have no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> like, that doesn't get you the job. Yeah. So yeah, I like that Deb said you had steady income. Like that is a big thing out the gate for this type of job. A Facebook community manager position is steady. If you have a big client like Tamara, who has members coming in and constant content to put in there, and they need somebody to just manage it. It's a lot of work and it's something to get off the business owner's plate. Uh, do you think this is a good starting job for a lot of people? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, I don't, I don't have a lot to compare it to, but it, it worked for me. I mean, it really, it really did seem you know, as long as you are comfortable on Facebook and you can navigate Facebook, it's, yeah. you can figure stuff out. You do have to be organized. So, you know, I have to be, I have to know what's coming and, and kind of be ready to present it to the group. So you do sort of have to be available a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. It's not, you know, it, 
I have to check in. I don't know if I have to, but I, for me, like my comfort zone is that I need to check in a couple times a day. And I, tr- I've tried to set those parameters for myself. So like, I'm not checking the Facebook group at 11 o'clock at night, you know, yeah. I try to check like, you know, first thing in the morning and then I'll check in the afternoon um, as I'm kind of going through the group. But I'm trying to think of what else. A lot of it too is, is trying to engage the members with each other. So like helping them build relationships within the group so that it helps with that retention. Like they want to sit, even if they now are confident and they're really good at painting door hangers, like we want them to stay in the group because they have friends in the group. Yes. They stay for the community. Mm. Oh, that's a good point. So what do you do to facilitate relationships? So, you know, part of like a day-to-day thing is just scrolling through the group and, you know, trying to just make connections, you know, try, like, oh, I heard you were dealing with this. Oh, well, guess what? You know, Sue said that yesterday that she was having that problem or things like that. Okay. Um, and then the <laughs> parties are another thing that helps. Yeah. And you really have your finger on the pulse of what people are talking about. Yeah. So you're like the know-it-all. <laughs> it's helpful for Tamara. I do like a newsletter for her at the end of each week. She goes live in the clubhouse to talk about people and give high fives and, you know, talk about problems that people are having. So I sort of keep a running record for her. She's in the community a lot, but but this way she doesn't have to do that. Like I'm kind of her. Yeah. For, for that. And that makes her look so good when she's like, hey, Allison, congratulations on your new baby. And right. Allison will probably end up being a fan for life, even though Tamara like, was busy in her job and missed it. That's awesome. I do that for Wendy Batten, but we do a monthly recap email. And we pull out some of the highlights and put it in there for people. Because some people are in the group, but not as active. Some people want the cliff notes. Like there's different kinds of Facebook group members. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. I'm glad you shared that. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough for being in here. If anyone has questions about Facebook community management, leave Megan a comment and she'll get back to you. And also I would love for you to post Tamara's free group. If we have any DIYers oh, yeah. in the house, go join and see what she's doing. Tamara is awesome. She is a military spouse who has just made this whole business take off like crazy. And it's so fun to watch her. And I'm so happy she hired somebody from my tribe. (laughs) I was like so flattered. You you should have seen how excited I was. I was telling my husband that. He's like, oh, that sounds good. I'm like, yeah, they picked mine. Like this legit headhunting group picked picked my student. And I think there's a bunch of us. I mean, I know Nicole was the one who had posted the site, but then um, Marilee, right, was also in the scene. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Marilee, I think, I haven't touched base with her, but she was supposed to help take over some blogging. Yeah. And Nicole was um, helping, like, with the blog management of that because mm-hmm. there was a lot to, I don't know, rodeo in there. <laughs> There's yeah, a, lot of, a lot of your unicorns are uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's a spot for everyone, like based on what they're doing. And I just want to say Facebook community management might not be for everybody, but it is a great way to get your foot in the door because you're tackling so many different things. And I did open up my course today for anybody who wants a quick win, wants to learn the skills. It's a two hour workshop course. You could get through it and be totally in a position like Megan to go get hired by a six figure entrepreneur or get some volunteer experience, help out your business friends and start looking for those jobs. So I'll post a link to that today too. So thank you so much, Megan. It was so fun chatting. Yeah. All right. We'll be in touch. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye. Isn't Megan awesome? She now has two clients a little bit over more than 25 hours a week, which is perfect for her going into the summer, being a stay-at-home mom, and getting to work and be home with her kid at the same time and not be on her feet, like she said. So thank you so much for joining me. If you would like to know more about the Facebook Community Manager course, just look at the link inside the show notes right here, and you can go learn about how you can become a Facebook Community Manager in just two hours. So with that said, I'll see you inside the Facebook group. If you want to pop over there and say hi and catch what's going on live this week. And I'll see you next week on Unicorns Unite. If you're ready to learn the digital marketing and social media skills that will get you hired online, 
head over to vacrashcourse.com where you can learn about my five-week program, the Digital Media VA Crash Course. Small business owners and solopreneurs want to hire someone who gets it and who can help them implement just about everything. They're looking for a magical assistant who does it all. With my comprehensive training, you can get your foot in the door and become the unicorn. Check out vacrashcourse.com. Where does she find her hiring tool or uh, hiring pool? <laughs> what? Um, oh God, I had a really good question in my head for a second. <laughs> like quarantine right here. 